We're going to look at the subdivision of three now, and we'll start with the basic pattern of three. And as we did in the subdivision of two, we're going to put the subdivision first of all on the third beat of the bar by giving it a little undulation, and then that naturally follows into two bounces on each beat. So we get one, two, three. One, two, three. I'm still making the main beat clear by doing a smaller one and then carrying the beat over to two, smaller two, and then carrying the beat up to three. So the shape of the main beat is still apparent. And as in two, we can use our crossover beat at the top here. One, two, three, and one, and two, and three, and, to give more definition. Just look at that from behind. Here's without the crossover. And with the crossover. And there's quite a lot of movement from the wrist here. As an illustration, we're going to use part of the introduction from Beethoven's Egmont Overture. The compound subdivision of three, in other words nine, is going to follow on very naturally from the simple subdivision we've already established. The simple subdivision, if you remember, looks like this. One, two, three, with the alternative of the crossover. One, two, three, and one. If we extend those beats, we get nine like this. So we have three to the left, three to the right, and then we can extend that into the Christmas tree at the top. So the whole pattern is going to look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I do quite a good lift onto the main parts of that pattern. Have a look at that from behind. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you'll see that there's quite a good swing of the hand from the wrist in those last three beats. Watch the last three again. Seven, eight, nine. So the arm will rise from here, and the wrist gives us the articulation. Seven, eight, nine. Also with this, it's important that you don't spread the beats too far out. In other words, that you keep coming back to the center body line. Otherwise, we get something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the orchestra has to look around for where the beats are. If we just centralize the whole thing, we have this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to illustrate this with the beginning of Debussy's Prelude à l'après-midi d'un forme. And of course, I'm sure you'll have noticed that the last bar of that was in six. The unequal subdivision of three is seven. And again, we're going to retain the shape of the main pattern. Here's our pattern of three. And we subdivided it in simple subdivision like this. 
And in compound subdivision like this, that's nine, and to make it seven, we simply chop one off either end of those bottom beads. So it comes out like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This shouldn't really imply a stress in any part of the beat. Look at it from behind. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. However, this can also be adjusted like this. So we could put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. For the musical illustration, I'm going to use a short section at the end of Stravinsky's ballet, The Firebird. And I'll show you two alternative ways of conducting this. The first is with the stresses that the composer has marked in the score being reflected in the beating pattern. And the second with our regular pattern of seven, which works just as well. <laughs> 